four times in its history, the city of London has gone up in flames. Roman London was burned twice. Then, 300 years ago, the Great Fire of London broke out here in Pudding Lane. In just over three days, the fire destroyed 13,000 homes, leaving 100,000 people homeless. Luckily, only six or eight people lost their lives, but the damage ran into millions of pounds. Firefighting equipment was as primitive as this. During World War II, the heart of London City was reduced to ashes again in the Blitz. Today, a new and grander city has achieved a new prestige throughout the world. Towering office blocks act as a frame for the historic buildings and create a new skyline. A skyline which symbolizes the way in which Britain has interwoven tradition with the needs of the jet age. For the fourth time in its history, the city's square mile is being almost totally rebuilt. It's planned to rebuild all but 70 of its 677 acres by 1980. At the time of the Great Fire, nearly a quarter of a million people were living in the city. Today, though half a million people work there, the resident population has dropped below 5,000. But the new plan will bring people back to live in the city again. Within the next 10 years, it is hoped to treble its population and also provide social and cultural centers. But could all this again be destroyed by fire? The London Fire Brigade was formed just a hundred years ago. It took over from the many private fire brigades run by fire insurance companies, which used horse-drawn fire engines like this one in the London Museum. Today, the London Fire Brigade serves 620 square miles of Greater London, with a city square mile at its heart. Centuries-old Grocers Hall in Princess Street was recently burnt out. Even a hundred years ago, this could have started another great fire of London, but modern appliances stopped the fire spreading. Preventing fires is just as important as fighting them, and the Fire Protection Association advises on both fire prevention and control and fire insurance surveyors make regular inspections. This test of the efficiency of a new kind of sprinkler is being made at the fire research station at Borehamwood, Hertfordshire, run jointly by the Ministry of Technology and the fire insurance companies. More than 800 people in Britain lose their lives every year by fire and more than 70 million pounds worth of property is destroyed. In this experiment, the effect of wind on the rate at which a fire burns, the deflection of the flames, and the amount of heat radiated from them are measured simultaneously. This enables safe distances between buildings to be determined so that flying brands and radiated heat from windows do not spread fire across narrow streets as they did in the Great Fire of London. This room has been set alight to study the effect which its contents and the air that gets in have on the temperatures reached and how long the fire lasts. It is then possible to decide how much fire resistance is needed in the building. All London buildings have to conform to stringent fire regulations laid down by the Greater London Council. If a fire was discovered in a new office building today, this is what would happen. Emergency. There's a fire in the basement. While the fire brigade was on its way, the staff would be leaving the building. Because tall modern buildings have fire precautions built in, the fire brigade no longer needs very high ladders and for the fireman's use, one of the lifts is always fitted with special controls and works on a separate protected electrical circuit. 
Among other precautions, at least one staircase on each floor must have a protective lobby with fire-resistant double doors to stop fire and smoke escaping onto the staircase. Basements, where there is often danger from smoke and fumes as well as fire, must have fire-resisting roller steel doors. The one really big fire risk in the city today is St Paul's Cathedral because of the timber structure of the dome and the difficulty of reaching it quickly. Once a year, the London Fire Brigade does a dome to crypt inspection with the cathedral's own fire officer, Wilfred Cripps. While work on the cathedral continues, the lifts up the scaffolding are available in case of fire, but it's hoped to collect enough money to install a permanent lift inside the cathedral. Firemen and their equipment could then be carried part way up the 365 feet to the top of the Golden Ball, instead of climbing all the 627 stairs. Every day, Mr. Cripps walks more than five miles as he inspects the cathedral's 95 fire buckets, 32 fire extinguishers, and 34 hydrants. A plan of the crypt for the fireman's use is at the work's entrance. In his little office, Mr. Cripps has a detailed plan of the whole cathedral and a telephone directly connected to the control room of the London Fire Brigade's Lambeth headquarters. The brigade receives more than 60,000 calls a year, and over half of them come to this control room. Only a very small percentage today are from the city itself. I see. What is your district? 1108 Watling Street. What district is that? The city. When an alarm call is received, the nearest fire station is alerted in less than 30 seconds. A rotating card index file tells the operators the nearest stations and equipment available. Charlie 25. Pump escape, pump and turntable matters. And a message is flashed on the teleprinter. This new fire station is in the Barbican area of the city. When the London Fire Brigade started, it had 38 fire engines and fewer than 150 firemen. Today, it has more than 550 vehicles and more than 5,000 firemen. Before very long, the familiar sound of the fire bell will be replaced all over Britain by the wail of the continental-style two-tone horn, which some fire engines already have. At the same time as fire stations are alerted, the alarm is also passed to the London Salvage Corps. This organisation, which is also celebrating its centenary, was formed and is still entirely maintained by the fire insurance companies. Its job is to attend fires to prevent damage by water and other effects of the fire and firefighting operations. Each vehicle carries 100 large plasticized waterproof sheets for protecting goods. It's also equipped for giving temporary protection to damaged roofs. A new city building is the headquarters of the Corps, with its 96 officers and men and nine salvage tenders. London's fire services are among the most efficient in the world. Today they ensure, to the best of human ability, that a great fire of London can never happen again.